chapter number 4, just for a few minutes this morning. <clears throat> I appreciate the good graces of God, amen, I appreciate his, his help and his leadership and his guidance. What would we do without the Lord? What would we do without Jesus? What would we do if we didn't have him that we could uh, that we could lean on, that we could trust, that we could go to, knowing that he's our special hiding place. He's the place where our refuge and our strength comes from. And friend, there's nobody like Jesus. No matter where you look, there's nobody like him. I, one of these days, I'm going to go to be with the Lord. I don't know when that's going to be. You don't know when that's going to be. But one of these days, I'm going to heaven. Amen. Now, I preached last Sunday, I preached on hell. And as preaching, you know, I, I don't want to ever leave anybody thinking there's no hope when they, it's hell. I want those that are saved, and day for them, when we, I can kind of, you know, sense, it won't be long now till we're all going to see Jesus face to face. And the scripture is enlightening to us in what heaven's going to be like somewhat. But our, our mind, the only reason there's not an elaborate, I believe an elaborate picture of heaven in the scripture is if we knew exactly all that God's got for us, we wouldn't be worth nothing to nobody. Amen. We, we, we want to get there, but, but we should know what the Bible tells us about heaven. And there's a few things that I know from the teachings of the scripture that heaven is somewhere up above because Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father and uh, Stephen looked up into heaven and, and, and seeing Jesus there and so somewhere in the northern parts the Bible says heaven exists somewhere but whether I know all that or not I know one thing for sure that heaven's going to be where Jesus is at amen in this book of Thessalonians chapter number uh, chapter number 4 I'll begin reading uh, with verse number 13, and I'll keep you just a little while this morning. The Bible tells us this, But I would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Father, we thank you for the scripture. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the blessed hope of the blessed day when you come and you gather your bride, Lord, home to be with you. Lord, as we wait, God, for the trump to sound, God, as we wait, as the Father tells his son to go get the bride, Father, I pray that you'd help us to be faithful until that day. God, I pray that you cleanse us this morning. God, forgive me of my sin. Lord, I know, Father, there are many, and God, I must get them cleansed, and I pray, God, for forgiveness of sin. I pray this morning, God, the sweet Spirit of God would move through this place. I pray, Father, that we get a glimpse of glory, Father, as we know soon we're going to see that. I pray right now, God, you'd help us, help us to rightly divide the word of truth, Help us to say nothing contrary to thy will, but all we say will be to thy glory. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a song out. It's heaven. Sure, heaven will surely be worth it all. And uh, my mom used to sing that song, and boy, I'd get all excited and thinking about how beautiful heaven must be, another song. There's all kinds of songs about heaven. David sung two this morning. I didn't go tell him what I was going to preach about, but that's the way God works, amen. Well, I'll tell you something, heaven's surely going to be worth it all because there I've got me a home, amen. Old Brother Reggie Sadler came here that night and he sung, I've got me a home. And I thought, what a title for a message, I've got me a home. Now I reside over in Swannanoa in a little, 
a little uh, a thousand foot a square foot house, raised three children. Uh, I don't know how many dogs, several cats. Amen. Got along just well. Got along just fine. People say, how can you raise a family in a house that small? I'll tell you something. You get real close to each other. Amen. But we never had a moment's trouble. We never had any trouble doing that. And, uh, and uh, so that's our home. That's the place we call home for now. But that's just a temporary place wherever you might live. You may own a home. You may rent a home. Uh, whatever it is, but that's your temporary place. If you're saved by the grace of God, don't put your roots down too deep because you're going to get them jerked out one of these days soon. Amen. When that happens, friend, whether you are in the grave or whether you are alive and remain one of these days, I'm going to heaven. I've got me a home. There was this blind fellow over in England. His name was William Dyke. He was 10 years old. He was blinded in an accident. Despite his disability, William graduated from a university in England with high honors. While he was in school, he fell in love with the daughter of a high-ranking British naval officer, and they became engaged. A blind guy gets engaged, never, have, never even see it. Now, see, this is kind of the way we are. We know there's something great out there for us as believers but all we can see is what we can see through the eyes of faith. Not long before the wedding, William had eye surgery and hoped that the operation would restore his sight. If it failed, he would remain blind for the rest of his life. William insisted on keeping the bandages on his face until his wedding day. If the surgery was successful, he wanted the first person he saw to be his new bride. Oh, friend, well, hallelujah to God. One of these days I'm going home to be with the Lord. And when I step through those heaven's gates, the first person I want to see is Jesus. Amen. The first person I want to contact and look at is the face of the Lamb of God who died for me. The wedding day arrived. The many guests included royalty, cabinet members, and distinguished men and women of society. Assembled together to witness the exchanges of vows, William's father, Sir William Hart, died. And the doctor who performed the surgery stood next to the groom, whose eyes were still covered with bandages. The organ trumpeted the wedding march, and the bride slowly walked down the aisle to the front of the church. As soon as she arrived at the altar, the surgeon took a pair of scissors out of his pocket and cut the bandages from William's eyes. Tension filled the room. The congregation of witnesses held their breath as they waited to find out if William could see the woman standing before him. As he stood face to face with his bride-to-be, William's word echoed throughout all the cathedral, you're more beautiful than I ever imagined. Amen. One day the bandages that cover our eyes will be removed when we stand face to face with Jesus Christ and see his face for the first time. His glory will be far more splendid than anything we have ever imagined in this life. Amen. One day I'm going to stand face to face to the Son of God. One day I'm going to stand face to face with the one who died for me. Oh, friend, if that's all heaven is, hallelujah to God, I'm ready to go. Amen. Oh, friend, I'm glad for Jesus. I'm glad for the plan of salvation. I'm glad that one of these days I'm going to far better place than this world could ever imagine. This world's full of heartache. This world's full of sorrow. This world is full of terror. But amen, when I get me a home, amen, the home I've got I'm going to, oh, what a day that's going to be. There's that old song that I love so well. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. Oh, Y'all looking at me like a calf looking at the new gate right now. Amen, you ought to be smiling or something. I'm telling you about a place where we're going that's out of this world. Amen. Let me give you just a few thoughts about the home I've got. Number one, I know that the home I've got is a heavenly place. It's a heavenly place. Now, men have tried to describe heaven for as many years as men has been around. And we know all the, we know that heaven is in, in uh, you know, in contrast to this world is more than we can ever imagine. 
We know that this world is going to be purged. We know that this world is going to be made anew. We know that the new city, Jerusalem, is coming down from God out of heaven to be suspended somewhere over this earth. And then there's the third heaven where Jesus is, amen, where God the Father is. This is all a picture of heaven that you and I have got when we leave this world. Now, when I was a kid, and I've told you this before, when I was a kid and a preacher preached on heaven, and, you know, my little mind couldn't grasp all of that. Still can't. But somehow I had in mind that heaven was going to be sitting on a cloud, playing a harp, and I can't even play a harp. See, I'd heard all these, I'd heard stories, and I'd heard, and I thought, well, that's going to be kind of boring, I, and I felt bad for feeling that way. And if that's all it was, even to me, a little boy, that was kind of boring. But even that, compared to hell, friend, is not boring, Amen. And so I begin, you know, as, as I grew older, I began to understand, read the Bible, study the Bible. Heaven's going to be, my goodness, can you imagine all the things that we're going to do in, in heaven? It's a heavenly place. It's a place where you and I, if, if whatever, whatever we, ha, you know, have done in this life, as far as uh, what has interested us, I believe will be magnified when we get to heaven. I can't, can you imagine the vastness of heaven? See, I can't get out what I'm trying to tell you. They just had this, uh, uh, this telescope that they were looking through, and they were looking, I believe it was 15 million light years away, some, some long distance that you and I can't put a number to. And they, found a, they say they found a planet that's much like Earth, but it's about three times bigger. Now, I don't, you know, I don't know what they found. I don't know if they found anything. I don't know if they're just trying to sell something. But I'll tell you something. When I get to heaven, if I want to go see what that is, amen, God's going to let me go see what that is, amen. Heaven is a heavenly place. Heaven is a holy place, number one. Heaven is a holy place. Because in heaven, the, the, constant, the constant choir sings and the constant angels uh, sing out, holy Holy, holy. Why? Because God is holy. And friend, we know that, that that heavenly choir forever will be in concert and those angels will be forever in concert praising the Lord, saying holy, holy, holy. And guess what? That'll be the words from our lips when we get before God. It's going to be holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. I've got me a home. Now I've seen a little smile creep across some of you's face. I was wondering if some of you are even alive today or not. Hey, I'll tell you, heaven is a place, it's a real place, and I've got me a home there. It's a, it's a, hey, it's a holy place. Hey, you all better smile now. i got your number for real. Heaven's going to be a happy place. <laughs> heaven's going to be a happy place. Even the grumpiest person you know is a Christian down here. It's going to be happy when they get to heaven. <laughs> I'm trying to find the grumpiest one in the building to look at and see. Amen. <laughs> but even, you know some grumpy Christians. You ever been around some grumpy Christians? I ain't got nothing to be happy about. Everything's bad. They ain't nothing good. Under the Lord, get a life, will you? Look around and see. The goodness of God. Well, this world's a mess. This world's terrible. I knew this fellow one time. I worked with him. And I'll, I'll never forget him as long as I live. I'll never forget him because I was trying to figure out this, man's a, this man is a, a church member. This man's a deacon of a church. It's a long time ago, so it has nothing to do with Gable Street. And, and this man is the most miserable human I've ever seen. If he ever smiled a smile on his face, I never saw it. It was all gloom and doom. It had a bad attitude. Me and him didn't get along. Needless to say, we didn't work together too long. But he had a bad attitude, and there wasn't nothing ever right, and he was always, always ill. And, always, and I thought, boy, 
If you make it to heaven, you're going to have to have some drastic changes done when you get there. There'll have to be major surgery done on your face to make you smile. Amen. I guess that's why we're all going to have new bodies. Amen. Heaven is a happy place. Now, I'm reasonably happy down here. Not all the time, but I'm reasonably a happy person. Some days are better than others. But at the end of the day, most of the time, I have enjoyed life. Amen. I have hard days just like everybody else. I go through problems like everybody else. But at the end of the day, when I consider it all, amen, I've had a pretty good life. Amen. And still having a pretty good life. Though the sorrows and troubles and all that rage around us, friend, we got more to be happy about than the rest of the world has. Amen. You know why? I've got me a home. Hallelujah. Hey, I've got, have you got a home? Beyond this life, or is this what you got? If in this life all you've got is what you've got, you're of all men most miserable. But I've got me a home. And heaven will surely be worth it all. It's a happy place. So everybody smile. Don't fight it, amen. Just go ahead and smile. Number two, heaven is an eternal place. Now think about that just a minute. How long is eternity? How long will your mind think ahead? I can't think far ahead. You know, it's hard for me to think back 6,000 years when the world was created. That's a long time. That's a long time. But heaven is a place of eternity. I've got me a home that's eternal. <coughs> I've got me a home that's going to never wear out. I've got me a home in heaven that's going to be always exciting and always new. Heaven is a place of eternity. We preached to you last Sunday on the rich man and Lazarus and how I believe with all my heart that today Lazarus is with the Lord. And I still believe that rich man is in hell screaming out today for one drop of water. 2,000 years they've been there and they've not touched, the, not touched the anything about what eternity is. It's forever and ever and ever. You think as far ahead as your mind can think and then you go... You go forward 10 million years and you've just, just begun eternity. Oh, my friend, there's no way that, that I can explain how long eternity is. Our minds won't take it. But when we get to heaven, we'll, you know what we're going to be glad of when we get to heaven? After we see Jesus, we're going to be glad that all we see is for eternity. Amen. How many of you had problems last week? If you didn't, I really need to talk to you, babe. Man, I've got to know how you got by a week without any problems whatsoever. And I'm talking about problems. I'm talking about sin problems. I'm talking about physical problems. I'm talking about financial stress, anything. Listen, you, everybody's got problems. Everybody's got troubles. One way or the other, you've got some kind of issue to deal with. But I'm telling you, what, how, would you how is it going to be when you wake up in glory and you've got no trouble? Can your mind grab that? Can you ever think about waking up in glory and not have, no, I mean, worry is non-existent. What was it said in our church bulletin? Worry is just, what was it, what was it said in our church bulletin about worry? It's uh, interest paid in advance of, of trouble that you ain't had yet. Hey, can you imagine waking up in glory and, and not worrying about nothing? Hey, some folks wake up in the morning, they worry about something. I'm guilty. Lord, am I going to be able to get out of the bed? <laughs> hey, listen, can you imagine waking up without a worry in the world on your heart, on your mind? I've got me a home that's going to be like that. Amen. It's a place where there's no problem whatsoever. It's a totally happy place. It's a totally... Uh, uh, eternal place for all eternity and it's a total place of excitement and I get excited when I get to thinking about some things in life hey, amen you do too you wouldn't be normal if you didn't get excited about something once in a while whether good or bad you all have times when you're excited about something I, you know, I, there's, I like to go fishing. I get excited about going hunting and fishing. I do. I get excited about that. Can't wait. Sometimes I get the wrong way excited when somebody's driving like a nut on the highway. I get excited, and it's a bad way to be excited that way. 
But I'll tell you something, friend. We're going to a place that's such an exciting place that nothing's ever going to be wrong, and every day is going to be something new. Oh, I failed to mention there's no day there. So every moment, oh, time doesn't matter anything to God. So eternally, everything's going to be exciting. Now, if we stayed excited down here all the time about something our hearts wouldn't take, we'd die of heart attack. You know that? Get excited, your blood pressure goes up, and all kinds of things happen. Our bodies can't stand it, but oh, oh, did I mention we're going to have a glorified body? Hallelujah. Amen. Does that excite you at all? No. Don't stop me, preacher. I'm just having a lot of trouble. I, nothing's right. Nothing's ever going to be right. I believe it when I see it. Hey, there's people like that. I believe it because the Word of God tells me that. Amen. I, listen, I, I have problems like everybody else, and, but I know one thing. I believe the Word of God. Amen. By faith, I believe the Word of God. And I believe that it's going to be a happy place, an exciting place. I believe it's going to be a place that is very eventful. You ever start something just to get something stirred up? I pick on somebody all the time at work just to get something going sometimes just to you know, just, just, to, just to keep something eventful going on. Because people are happy, you know, if, they, if, if there's something, something going on around them. People seem to be happier and they work better. So I'll pick on them or I'll do something to make it eventful, you know, so they'll, you know, so people will just stay a little excited about something, even if it's work. But heaven's going to be eventful. I believe whatever you can imagine... Because everything you imagine is going to be holy and everything you imagine is going to be righteous and perfect and everything you imagine that you ever want to do in heaven, I believe you're going to get to do it. Heaven will surely be worth it all. I've got me a home there. I've got me a home in heaven. It's an eventful place. Number three, heaven is an awesome place. That word awesome came into being many, 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 many years ago. But it came in, into prevalence just a, not many years back. Oh, that's awesome. That's extraordinary. I guess that's easier than saying extraordinary is awesome, isn't it? My God is an awesome God, and I say amen to all of that. But heaven is a place that is an awesome place. Now, you go home, and you sit down, if you can manage to relax for a little bit this afternoon and let your mind wonder about the awesomeness of heaven. What an awesome place that is. Hey, I've got me a home there. Now there's people that say, I've got an awesome home down here. You may have, you may have a, a $3 million, $4 million, $10 million house. You may live in the, uh, you know, over on the, uh, in the, in the Beltmore house. You may have one. You ain't, but you could have, I guess, if you want to have enough money. But you can have all that, and you say, man, I live in an awesome place. But guess what? Every once in a while, you got to paint it. Once in a while, you got to fix a hinge on the door. Once in a while, you got to spray for termites. Hey, I've got me a home that's so, so awesome that it's never going to take any upkeep. Nothing in heaven's going to take any upkeep unless it's something you like to do. You know, I imagine, my imagination goes wild when I go to thinking about heaven and uh does anybody here enjoy cutting grass? I don't mind cutting grass. What if, what if, what if, brother, if you got to heaven and say, boy, that grass looks like it needs cutting. Now, I'm, I'm way out on the limb here. You know I am. I'm just, I'm thinking out loud. So don't go telling everybody the preacher's a heretic and he believes you're going to have to cut grass in heaven. I don't know if you will or not. Does anybody know? Anybody got an answer for that? No, you're the same boat I am. You don't know either. But suppose you love to cut grass. Boy, that grass needs cutting. Lord, give you a heavenly lawnmower and you just bow the hand out of it. Yeah, back them toes you talked about. I got a, I got a three-piece rechargeable drill, a, a Dremel drill, and a, uh, and a uh, hand saw for $30 of it. They brand new on me. That's got not one thing to do with the message, but I thought of it. 
What if that, what if that was to come up in heaven and, and, and he seen tools that he liked? And, uh, son, you'll have a tool shop, amen, that this world can't even think about. And you won't even need them, but you'll have them. You might build something just to build it, amen. I don't know. You don't know. But what I'm telling you is this morning by all of this that I've got me a home and I can't imagine how good it's going to be. Mow along that grass just a riding along. On that zero turn thing, you know, where you just go around the circle and it don't, that kind of thing. And uh, you look behind you and the grass is flying everywhere and just as you go by, it's growing right back up. So if you want to do that a million years, you go ahead and cut that grass. Brother Frank likes to build back there. I don't think he likes to build that much, though. So I, yeah, he doesn't give me the nod of it, no. But whatever you like to do, I believe there'll be whatever. Listen, and it don't matter if it ain't none of that. If my imagination has done gone off the deep end and nothing of that ever takes place, I've still got me a home because Jesus is going to be there and he's prepared a place for me that this world has no idea what it's going to be like. It'll all be heaven. It'll all be heaven. It's, it's going to be in, in an awesome place. <clears throat> Number four, heaven is going to be a place of victory. Never, never will there be any more battles to fight. The victory of the believer is when we leave this world. The true victory is when we leave this world and we go into the presence of the Lord for all eternity. The devil's beat. He's beat anyway. When he loses us to heaven, he's lost us for good. He can't pick on us no more. He can't tempt us no more. It's a victorious place. I believe heaven is going to be a vibrant place full of beauty. Now they ain't, I, I, I sit back at night, sometimes I sit out on the porch and I look up. And to me, that black sky with those stars in it is a, is a beautiful thing. My wife's got some flowers uh, growing outside, and one of those things, and I don't even know what you call it, it's a, it's a lily that gets about this high. And it sticks up there, well, it just now got, got through blooming. I don't know what it is, but it's got big old round blooms about that big and about that long. And, and they are gourd. They are beautiful and they smell so good when you walk by them. I thought, you know what, God? You made that just the right height for me. When I walk by there, I can't help but smell that pretty flower. And the beauty of that thing is just vibrant and it's beautiful. And, you know, heaven's going to be all of that. The beauty of heaven, I can't imagine. This world is beautiful, but, you know, it's under the curse. Can you imagine what this world will look like when it's no longer under the curse? I've got me a home. I've got me a home. <clears throat> then heaven, number five, and I'm about through, heaven is an elaborate place. That's all I need to say about that. It's elaborate. It's huge. It's, it's far beyond our imagination. It's an extraordinary place. Whatever we've got down here can compare not to what heaven's going to be. I've got me a home. Last of all, it goes back to eternity. It's never ending. Now, God's been around for a long time. Amen. He's been around for eternity, and he'll still be around for eternity, and we'll be around for eternity. And I don't know what God's got in the future for you and I in heaven. But if God's been around all these billions and billions and billions of years and God's created more than we can ever imagine God's created, heaven for you and I is going to be a place that's never ending. Anything we do, never ending. I will tell you, heaven will surely be worth it all. I've got me a home. I've got me a home far beyond this world. You may be facing discouragement and heartache. Listen, <coughs> if you look beyond that, look beyond that just for a moment. And you can understand, amen, this life is brief. It's a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. If you're a child of God today, you've got a home. You've got a home far above this life that you live in. Don't get discouraged. Don't get downhearted. Say, but preacher, I'm facing all kinds of problems. Listen, 
You ask God, you look to God, you let him help you. And while this world, while we're going on in this world, amen, we can enjoy a little bit of heaven on earth just by allowing God to direct our lives. Just relying on him and trusting him. Let him carry us along through the hard places of life. Let him do it. I can't, but God can. I can't handle everything, but God can handle it. God knows how. Friend, until we get to glory, stay by the stuff. Don't give up. Don't give up hope. Amen. Stay by the stuff. Because heaven will surely be worth it all. I've got me a home there. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Help, I pray. God, if there's someone here that's discouraged, don't know what to do, I pray, God, you'd help them to call on you today. Lord, I pray right now, God, you'd help us, Lord. We'd Lord, live and serve you until you come. Walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Lord, help me, I pray. Bless those that have come this morning in Jesus' name. Amen.